going on? What's going on, good people? What's going on, everybody? How is everybody doing this evening? That is my brother, Casey Fowler. I am yeah. Lamar, and this is Foul Language Podcast. Yeah, man. Like every other episode, you might just hear some foul language. So go ahead and get the kitties to bed, put your headphones in, get your accessories right. Let's go. Let's get it, man. Got that right. Roll the intro. Perfect. All right, everybody, it's that time before we get started. Just to let you know what we got for the evening. Brother, what are your accessories this evening? I just have a cigar since I was smoking my bitch when we was talking. Um, I got a Casa Cuevas. Oh. Hey, man, a Casa Cuevas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And cut it's looked, pretty good, you know. Your cut decent. looks a little, yes, yeah, decent. It's a little, like, Burn, uh, decent. Yeah, good job. Hey, man, it can't be all great. Yeah, you're and, right. You're and, right. And, and today, since it's Friday, I had a hell of a fucking week. I got a hybrid drink in my cup. I got some scotch from last week. I knew it was good. And some Japanese whiskey splashed on top. Woo! That should be, be interesting. That it actually interesting. tastes really fucking good, bro. Yeah, I was going to say that they shouldn't conflict too much, so it should mm-hmm. be fine. It, it blended really well. You got yeah. a little bit of sweetness from the Japanese whiskey and the, the yeah. The, potency of the, the scotch so it's a it's a good mix man I, and it goes good with the cigar too so. mm-hmm. but that's what i got going on man what you got going on over there you got some more yak hell no <laughs> so i have this guy it's called penelope mm. bourbon uh barrel strength texas select so it's got that uh 115 proof i got it because it was texas select and i thought it was a texas bourbon it's not it's just a blend for Texas. It's out of Indiana or some shit. 115 proof. That's that grown man shit right there. Bro. I am a grown man. And after this week, I'm grown as fuck because Adulton is a bitch. So, <laughs> <laughs> so grown drink for a grown week, damn it. Yes, and sir. so I was going to get another cigar. And then I remember when we talked about it last time we recorded, when you had what you had, I think we both had Alec Bradley cigars. So mm. I was going to bring out the motherfucking magic toast oh yeah i definitely have that shit yeah i know you don't so <laughs> and i mentioned i bring the story so all it was they call it magic toast because when they were in the, the cigar field and they had the cigar the tobacco they were like this is basically some magical shit and so they had a toast to this magical shit magic toast i was thinking like bread with some weed on it or something is what i thought but that's a magical toast too some butter some honey on top mm-hmm. Mm. yeah quite quite delightful so <laughs> that's just the introduction of the accessories for this evening stay, yes, stay tuned sir. to see how they are coming along this evening all right ladies and gentlemen it's that time of the show where we you know yes, like to spread a little positivity yes sir uh, or just you know let you guys know what's going on in the foul language podcast world you know going on with us on a day to day we mm-hmm. like to crank stuff up on a positive note and just, you know, be thankful, if you will, for yes. certain attitude. stuff that happens. And, you know what I'm saying? Have that positive attitude yes. and things like that, man. So it's time for the wibble or the what's best in life. So, brother, we're going to kick it off with you, man. What's best in life? Oh, man. I don't know, man. My lighter, my favorite lighter broke. Ran out of all my butane and my lighters. Ran out of butane to fill the lighter. So that, that was kind of a fucked up end to the fucked up week. But anyway, that's all fixed. Sending the lighter off for the warranty claim. Uh, got some fresh butane, so the lighters are filled except for the one that broke. And I'll be sending that one in later on, so it's all good. Um, Simone, shout out to my my oldest. She uh, got recognized at school today being an academic achiever for her class. So basically, they were saying that you know she's been kicking ass in her subject. So. She's doing good things. So definitely excited for that. She was all happy. It was funny because she knew she was getting an award because Kim was at the school. And I couldn't go because Kim has some stuff to do. And Lamar was, as I don't think I mentioned it, but Lamar, he's got my son, my youngest. He's got strep and, and the flu. So he's a tough little guy. So he's just hanging on, still asking to watch Baby Shark. So he's doing all right. So I'm just hanging out, trying to help him feel better. So. Fever's coming down a little bit, so definitely keeping him covered and protected and all that. Thing. We finished Queen of the South. Okay. Yeah. And yeah it don't take that, that bitch. It don't, it don't take that long. Yeah, I need to finish that shit so we can talk about it. Because I got it's some gonna, shit. To, 
It's gonna be a while. It's gonna I got some shit to say. We still working on Witcher and Last Kingdom. Stop basically. Witcher and Last Kingdom now and do Queen of the South. <laughs> just so I can talk about it. And I ain't saying it's great or no shit like that, but I just got some shit with I me mean, because me and Kimden talked about it and I need some more people to talk about it with. So fair enough. So yeah, we finished that. Uh Mayans started. Uh, uh, motorcycle soap opera, if you will. So I'll be watching that. Is that a new wanna... season? Yeah, new season just started oh, this okay, week. Okay. So Check I think they had a double episode. Yeah. Never finished that. Sons of some shit, man. That was yeah, that was good shit for me. It it was kind of corny and a little extra sometimes, but I loved it. Uh, it was it was a guilty pleasure. I don't give a damn. Indeed. You like uh, what you like, sure. Yeah, hell yeah. So finally, I talked shit about it for years. I mean, years. Uh, Kim and I finally decided to start watching One Piece. <laughs> We're not going to binge through that shit. We're going to watch like an episode here, an episode there, sprinkle in a movie. Seven. We're on episode like four. So um, we started watching dub, said no, fuck that. We're watching sub. Definitely the way to go. If you decide to watch One Piece, watch it sub, people. Um, that's all I'll say from so far. And I found the physical therapist. And before I talk about that, let me just first uh, put a public service announcement out there. Fuck the healthcare industry. And the, not the healthcare industry, my apologies. Fuck the healthcare insurance industry. Let me say that again. Fuck the healthcare insurance industry. So found a physical therapist and she's trained in one of the disciplines I was looking for. So that's exciting. Um, we worked out, uh, Thursday, so I'll be going two times a week for six weeks and then we'll see what happens after that. So that's exciting. Hoping to get some improvement, be back on these streets on two wheels in no time. So that's going to be exciting. Can't wait for that. Um, I, thought I, had, bike right now, huh? I mean, I could, but I'm a little nervous yeah. about a couple things. So I'm, I'm holding off on that. Finally putting my tags on my car. So i'm officially legal now <laughs> so that, that's cool but i mean other than that man a lot of little stuff because it's been one of those weeks big thing with simone man that was awesome proud of her for that respect great things from that little lady it's gonna be good times so how about you man what is best well, man first of all let me say i don't know what it's been with me the past couple of weeks man of warriors fans sorry i've had no motivation to do shit I don't, I don't know what it is right now, but I'm not motivated. But anyway. Yeah, happens, um, man. You, you um, need a hug, bro? Hug. I don't know, man. Maybe. Shit. Okay. Bring, it in, man. Bring it in, man. Bring it in. I ain't touching you. Not even through the camera, you motherfucker. Anyway. Damn, I'm so angry. Why are you so fucking angry? <laughs> I don't know, man. I was ready to fight motherfuckers yesterday. I hated humans yesterday. But <laughs> I'm sorry. Kind of like, kind of like my ass just hated me just then. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting sidetracked, man. But a couple of dope things, man. Um. Uh, I took leave last week. We took a trip up there to Kentucky to go see you know, my in-laws and mm-hmm. my goddaughter. Shout out to Justin, Drea, Addie, AJ. Shout out to y'all, man. It was mm-hmm. a good time. They ended up having a, a, a Easter party thing on Easter Sunday. It was, you know, a big old tomorrow uh, event like they like to do, man. A lot of food, a lot of mm-hmm. drinks. Guitars came out. Um <laughs> They were, they were shooting dice and shit. Oh, that's like, some serious shit. Kid, they had a big ass Easter egg hunt, and it, it, it was cool, man. It was real cool. I was the only melanin person there, the only one, was just me on the island. But it was cool, you know what I'm saying? I had my crown in the car, so I just keep walking to the car, of course, and crown. So I ended up getting wasted. By See, that's what a flask time. is great for, man. Yeah, well, I didn't feel like walking around with my flask, man. Actually, I forgot it. To be honest, that, I knew that's what it was. <laughs> Don't lie. So, so, you know, we was, uh, you know, good times, good food. We chilled out. I got fucked up every day that weekend. Like I tend to do. That's me. That's what I mm-hmm. do. Don't judge me. Fuck y'all. Um, oh, damn. Then, what is know, dude is angry today? Then we got back and our car was finally fucking right. I don't know if I even told you offline or not, bro. But the, the people that was working on our car, we got the car back. But we had to give it back to these motherfuckers because they forgot to put a fucking part on my guy. I don't know. I don't even know if I told you this shit or not, but they forgot to put a fucking part on. So we had to give the car back. They had it for like another week. Got the car back, turned the rental, cars running good. Started back on work week. That's that's not even a what's the best in life. I'm just gonna leave that bullshit. That's it. Um mm-hmm. 
and then a couple little academic uh little anecdotes there, you know. Shout out to Shania, my my youngest daughter, mm, and, mm-hmm. and our niece Malia mm-hmm. for making, you know what I'm saying, the beta club in high school. That just means y'all stay with it. And I ain't gotta pay no tuition. Yes, keep with it. Keontae. Um, they did a band assessment and all this other stuff, and he got a. He's playing the saxophone next year. They do this weird shit here where you got to do an assessment to figure out. Oh, yeah, yeah, you told me about that. Yeah, it's just weird. But they picked the saxophone for him, so he'll be playing the sexy. He kind of, he look like he could be a saxophone player. (laughs) I can see that shit. I can't wait, but it's going to be so fucking funny. Kim Andre, you know, he took an alternate path with uh, his education recently, but he's back into school and stuff. He's doing pin foster, getting his diploma and everything like that so shout out to my boy he, you know he, he takes he took his own path he hard hit his foot like his daddy man but as long as he get right that's all the fuck i care about yeah yeah i guess i guess that's about it i can't really think of nothing else that's major right now the, the mm-hmm. ps5 still rolling good start playing madden on that motherfucker i'm two and one right now so if anybody want to come see me on the ps5 and the ps4 because it plays on both black lion x forever y'all go ahead and look me <laughs> look up my game attack if y'all want to smoke Xbox, PlayStation, I'm for all that shit. Yeah, man, one more was best in life, man, before we move on is, you know, while we was up there in Kentucky, me and the wife went on a little date. You know, I don't even mm-hmm. remember last time we went on one, but that's the life of being in the military, not mm-hmm. having nobody around like that. Mm-hmm. Not like networks. People. Yeah. Yeah. Not liking people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but went to the casino, man, had a great fucking time. I actually came up on like $403. So, oh, you know, oh, that's how we it was good. good. You know, I took 300, gave her 150, I took 150, and then came up on $400. So, you know, that's awesome stuff, man. That's it was good. fun, man. It was that's fun. Good. We we didn't eat nothing, we didn't drink nothing. We just went in there and gambled a little Gamble. bit. So, it was oh. fun. It was fun. Good, I really, good. we really enjoyed that shit. Glad you we enjoyed didn't it. get to go to Vegas or nothing like that. We had our little mini Vegas. There you go. Kentucky, so. It was cool. All right, everybody, let's get this ball rolling. So for tonight, we're going to start it off with some firearms. It's been a while since we've talked about our firearms and love thereof in a minute. So I had a question. I am in the market for a couple of things right now. I'm always in the market for something, but I may pull the trigger, <laughs> pun intended, in a, and probably next week or the week after, depending on what I decide on. Mm-hmm. If I decide on one thing, I'll get it. If I don't, I'll wait a couple more weeks to get it. So to you, I was thinking about it because there's a couple things that I could get that are like cheaper. And like, you'll see them like, uh, like uh, one of the things I'm looking at a gun from CZ and they make a lot, there's a lot of CZ clones from a couple manufacturers that are significantly cheaper. And a lot of times they say, given a few things, they're really good firearms. So with that being said, I thought I'd ask you, because you know, sometimes you watch these reviewers like I was watching some reviewers on 1911s and they're like, yeah, um, if you don't spend at least $15,000, you're not getting, I mean, $1,500, sorry, you're not getting your money's worth. And so I was going to ask you, what do you think about like one for a carry pistol and then two, just firearms in general? Should you buy a cheap, should you buy a cheaper firearms? You can have more or accessorize more, or should you just take the slower route and just buy the expensive that you know that that's got a quality reputation behind it. So, what do you think for both a carry gun and a just a just regular firearm purchase? All right now, for the carry, I don't think it has to be too expensive. Now, don't go out there and get your fucking hot point or some bullshit like that, or, mm-hmm. or a, a Sunstar or whatever the hell mm-hmm. that was. I got in there that they don't even make anymore. I mean, they sell. Bro, you got a paper mache firearm. <laughs> They sell high quality firearms that you ain't got to spend a lot of money for. Prime example, mm-hmm. my G2C. It, mm-hmm. It's inexpensive. I spent about 200 bucks on that motherfucker, man. That mm-hmm. bitch has never jammed. It fires fucking great. Um, the sights is, is perfect. I mean, everything is great with that, that, that firearm, man. But mm-hmm. A lot of people feel like, oh, I got to pay for the name more. If it's not mm-hmm. Smith & Wesson, if it's not Sig, if it's not Glock, then that shit's wrong. No, whatever. Mm-hmm. As long as this bitch shoot. Without fucking up one time, then it's a good fucking pistol. Mm-hmm. Now, I would pay a little bit more for ammo because you don't want to buy no sure. cheap ammo whatsoever. I know we're talking about firearms, point. but you don't want to buy no cheap ass ammo because you might fuck yourself up or mm-hmm. you might go to shoot and then, <laughs> then mm-hmm. you're looking stupid. 
and you know just for every day just firearms and yeah it does depend on your preference but a lot of these guys like i said they just pay for the name mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them are just and a lot of the cheap ones are just clones of that Mm -hmm. But what I recommend for anybody who's you know in the market like you're in the market and you actually do that, go to fire, go to a gun range and rent some shit out. You know what I'm saying? Do it. Do yeah. your research on it. A good way to really check, in my opinion, I know there's gonna be some some gun enthusiasts like, oh, he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> fuck you. We'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But um, my personal opinion is a, a simple functions check. You break that shit down. How how simple is it to put up, put together, put you know what I'm saying, the rounds in, everything like that, just the actual function of the firearm. Mm -hmm. And if it works great, it works great. That's what I did with the, the G2C. I was like, shit, $200 though? I don't know if that shit would be worth it. But mm -hmm. it's actually, if you, you can look it up, I'm pretty sure you've looked up Tauruses and everything like that. They're, they're, they're a really reliable, solid fucking mm -hmm. uh, brand of firearm. So as far as expensive or cheap, it also matters your budget is is also mm, the thing point. too. Like now you don't want to just you know fuck. I just want a gun because I want one. That's just what I want to do right now. I got one hundred and fifty dollars. What's the cheapest shit you got? Here's <laughs> your <laughs> finest high point, sir. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here's your high point. But no, you you want to spend a little something. Like you know, granddad always say you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get no. Just you don't want to buy a seventy-five dollar fucking pistol because I mean you pay you buy a seventy-five dollar pistol, go shoot like a seventy-five dollars. Research and things of that nature is really important in firearm. Like I said, for me personally, the the price tag on a firearm is less important to me versus the kind of ammo I get. Mm -hmm. That's more important because any pistol will shoot. As long as you take care of that motherfucker, even a high point, honestly, if you take care mm -hmm. of that bitch, they're going to shoot. It's just your skill level your uh due diligence and keeping the maintenance up on your pistol mm -hmm. so if you buy cheap or you buy expensive they're gonna shoot the same fucking mm -hmm. and and that's really yeah that's really it man that's really it how about you cool so as you know i've been doing the research so on the taurus i'll talk on that first um a lot of people love the g2c they're not big fans it's kind of mixed on the g3c and that's what I've been hearing. Um, a buddy of mine, he's got a G3C, and that's his carry pistol. And he hates it. He He's always like, it It don't shoot right. It jams. So he's um thinking about getting something else. Has he tried switching his ammo? Or maybe switching yeah, I mean, he's ammo. got, like, all kinds yeah. of ammo. So he said it just luck of the draw. I mean, because what I was reading on one of the reviews, a lot of some reviews, is that sometimes what happens with the G3C, if I remember right, it's been about a year, but I think sometimes it's a light primer strike. And so you're not going to get a fire with a light primer strike. So, yeah, so that's um kind of the issue with the G3C that I've seen. I'll vouch for the G2C. I shot yours and I loved it, man. I almost bought me one. It was, it was real tempting. That's my favorite. So, yeah. So what I'll say is, I mean, like for me, and I would say don't necessarily go and say if your budget is whatever your budget is, don't max out your budget and buy, let me get the most that my money can buy because you're going to want to get training. Like you said, you want to spend money on quality ammo and what happens when you buy a firearm accessory via lights, optics, if it's a rifle, a sling, you know, if you want to switch something out, change out the trigger, whatever the case may be, like in my case, um, my m and is great. I love it. Uh, shoots fantastic. It's one of my favorite guns that I've shot. But what I will say is like, I kind of wish that um, it had a cut for an optic. And yes, I can go and get it cut for an optic, but it's like, okay, that's $200, $300. And I'm like, by that time, I'm halfway to something else that already has an optic cut and I can do other things with the M&P or sell it back. And so what I'll say is like, and you mentioned it too, if you can get to a range that rents firearms and if you spend, if it's $15, it's, it's well worth the money to yeah. try whatever you can. And if you, if you regular arrange, join the membership, cause like my membership, uh, all rentals are free. Sometimes I just go to the range with my ear pro, my eye pro buy ammo there and just be like, yes, um, I'm using your shit today. So, and that's fantastic. Uh, I apologize in advance if all my shit falls over everybody. It's really windy out here, so 
everything might just blow over. You might hear some wind. We're going to be all right, and we're going to keep rolling. So one thing I will say from shooting, you know, different firearms from Caltech all the way up to FN and Walther and SIG and MMP and Block, I think I've shot most of the main folks. You do notice certain things about fit and finish, the ergonomics, it might fit your hand. Like um, I was going to get the Glock 43X as a carry, and I did not like it. It just did not hit. I mean, and I'm sure with training and practice, I could get over the things that I didn't like. But I was like, why settle when there's guns that I shot that I love? You know what I mean? And what you'll find sometimes is different. You know, those clones may not have as good of a trigger or it may, the manufacturing tol tolerances are key. I mean, that's a big thing to look out for with some of those budget guns that are clones a lot of times, as they're not necessarily built to the same manufacturing specs. So you may not get good fittings and you may not, and, and that may be some of your uh, failures associated with that. If you have cleaning, lubing, and just running ammo through it, sometimes to loosen some of that shit up and fix that, those, some of those problems. But that is something to, um, to be mindful of and what i would say is just uh and i'm talking carry guns i'll go to regular firearms in a minute is i would say get the most you can afford in your but get the most you can afford in your budget factoring in getting training and some good ammo too like you said so i mean if your budget is say 800 dollars, i wouldn't go get something that's 759 you can come down a little bit more. I mean, the MMP Shield is a good firearm, and you can find those like both both five hundred dollars all day. I mean, certain Glocks are like that. So, I mean, just just tailor your budget. Or if your budget's less than that, I mean, the high point may be where you at. <laughs> and you know, no judgment. Just keep that bitch clean. Yeah, no judgment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep it clean. Practice with it. Just make sure that it's reliable. Make sure that you know. If anything happens, you know what happened and why, because, you know, if you, heaven forbid, need it for what it's intended for, you don't want a, a mystery of why it wouldn't fire. You want to be like, oh, that didn't fire because it doesn't like this particular grain of ammo. Switch to your other magazine and roll or whatever the case may be. As far as other guns go, again, I think it's more pronounced in rifles, manufacturing tolerances, just because you have more parts if you will, you have like different quality barrels. I mean, and that's the key with like an AR is the, the rifle quality. And that's good. I mean, some people will just buy like a cheap AR and then buy the expensive ass rifle. I mean, expensive ass barrel just to drop in it, just to, you know, because the lower is all, you know, same shit, trigger, go bang. So it, it's totally up to you. But I mean, I say stick with reputable brands if you can, look at some reviews, see what people say, get the consensus. And you'll know, though, check a couple. Of, and if you look at a review from somebody, look at four or five of their reviews. Because some people out there, I hate to say it, they're going to love everything. And the reason why they love everything is because either they got it free. They got a little bit of money in the pocket, a little sponsorship deal or some shit like that. So you got to be mindful of that, too. There are some folks that are honest out there that um, are really, you know, reputable. I won't really name any names right now. And there's a few. And you'll see those that, you know, if they never dislike a gun. I, I'd be a little leery about their reviews because every gun ain't for you. I mean, and I found that, I mean, just like, like I said, the Glock and like, you know, people love the SIG uh, P365. I didn't really like it. I mean, it was a nice gun, but I didn't really like it. No. It shoots well. I mean, it shoots okay. I mean, it shoots well. I just, for me, I just didn't like it. I mean, I didn't like the fit. I mean, it would have been a great gun and the, the optic, I, I, that that did convince me that I want to go with an optic. So I will say that. Other than that, yeah, it may just not fit you. I mean, the Glock was a good gun too, the 43X. And you can customize it, change barrels, slides, grips, triggers. I mean, it's basically a blank canvas, if you will. So you could do whatever you want, but I just didn't like it and didn't want to put money into something that I would have to do a whole bunch of shit too. So I think I got it down to about four or five. And so we'll see. Um, I think I've shot all of them except for one. So I think that's what I'm waiting on before I decide. So I would say, you know, do your research, check and get good quality ammo, plan for some training, do some practice and do some dry firing, make sure you're comfortable with it because some things might just be that it's new to you. I mean, you ever got a rental car and you hit the brakes and because you're not used to those brakes, it's like, oh shit. So 
fucking rap for it. And yeah. Nancy Locke <laughs> pull shit. I'm sorry, carry on. <laughs> look, 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 triggered, <laughs> triggered. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I think it's great. Let us know for for those that carry out there. I mean, I know some people are like, oh, why are you even talking about carrying? Shouldn't carry anything. But whatever. I live in Texas. Bullshit. <laughs> I just seen the headline today. And from Texas. What was that? Motherfucker shot another motherfucker over a parking lot dispute. Fuck that shit. Mm-hmm. But I do want to add before we move on. Mm-hmm. Um, also, before you buy your firearms, ladies and gentlemen, you can shoot them motherfuckers before you buy that bitch. They'll let most places will let you actually go. It fire depends that on where you're buying from. Yeah, like I said, like, most places. It depends. Um, if you're buying from like a pawn shop, that's kind of yeah. iffy. If you're buying from like a range, uh, if, if they might not let you shoot that particular firearm, but they may have a rental. Like if it's used, they'll probably let you shoot it. No problem if you're gonna buy, and you're serious and not just like kicking tires and fucking around. Um, if it's brand new, they might not let you fire. And if you're buying it like a a big box store, like an academy or. Uh, um, they're not gonna let you fire shit. But if you have the opportunity to fire the weapon that you want, definitely go shoot that motherfucker. Hell yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, going to the gun range. I mean, hell, if there's somebody in the booth and it looks like they might have it next to you, tap them on the shoulder and be like, hey, you know, when they are not shooting, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't like people. Motherfucker tap me. Hey, I like what you're shooting. Can I fuck out my face, man? <laughs> but you know, if that's what y'all want to try, you go ahead. I mean, you know, you Don't might get some, my show. get some angry motherfuckers <laughs> like this guy. Don't tap on my show. Don't you do and, it. And they'll they might let you shoot it. Or, you know, you got friends or whatever that carry. Talk to them. They may have exactly what you're looking for. Like, hell, I found out a buddy of mine, he's got three of the five that I wanted to shoot. So if they didn't have him at the range, I would have been like, hey man, let's go to the range. I'll buy the ammo. You just roll on through with your firearms. Good deal. Yeah, so. Hell of a deal. Yeah, I mean, I do it, shit. But yeah, I mean, definitely try your shit out. Mm-hmm. Or try a version of it out or anything like that, if you can. Yeah, that's, that's what, real. Especially for first-time buyers, I recommend going to a place where you can actually try your firearm out. Mm-hmm. Versus going to, like, an academy or a pawn shop. Because me, personally, I know what the fuck I want. Yeah. So, I'm good. Like, I can go... When I, when I bought one of my other, one of, when I bought my uh, AR pistol, I knew what I wanted. It looked at me, I looked at it, it looked at me, I looked at it, and I was like, that's the one. Slow so, music started playing and shit. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Hell and hell you yeah. started envisioning like dates and long walks on the park and shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Luther started yeah, playing. Because you know, I could do that. Like, I, I hold it, I test the weight, test the grip. Cock it back, all the, you know what I'm saying? I know, I know what yeah. I'm looking for in a firearm, you, you but if you don't manipulate don't. it, yo, yeah, now yeah. definitely that. That's a good point yeah. because you can do that in any store. Um, yeah. but it just, just make sure it fits your hand comfortably, yeah, all that shit. You can do that in the store, that's no problem, yeah. That is a good point because, yeah, that's, he, that, that's kind of what I did with Mark when, mm-hmm. when Mark came to Atlanta looking. We, we pulled out one that you know, we asked for some recommendations. We, 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 she picked out one, I was like, you know, pick it up. She liked the way it felt, everything like that. It was actually a, a marketable brand mm-hmm. um, and shit like that. But yeah, research, 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 research. Or take a motherfucker with you to know what the fuck they talking about. Mm-hmm. And ask, don't be scared to ask these motherfuckers questions. That's what they're there for. Yep. And ask a lot them. of times, man, they enjoy oh, answering shit, the shit. questions. Like, shit, I've been in places for hours. I like the range. I'll spend about an hour shooting and then an hour just shooting the shit about different guns. Like, when I shot the FN, Brady was like, I love that gun. Yeah, and then I get it. Yeah, I care just one in my boot. And yeah. Oh, this much. one. I like the way this shoots because this yeah. does this, but this does that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Th- those were the only people I like talking to. I don't like talking to people at range here, but then again, mm-hmm. I, I don't like people here. I'll add yeah. one more thing based on what you said, too. Go for it. Even if you buy something that you don't like, don't be like hell bent on, I'm going to force myself to shoot this gun. You know what I mean? Because if like if you don't like it or it don't fit comfortably, you're not gonna use it. You're not gonna carry. It. You're not gonna shoot it. And yeah, then it just becomes an expensive ass paperweight. Yeah, and I got so, rid of my Ruger for that. Well, reason. yeah, and, and that's what I was thinking about as you were talking. I was gonna say, see, even somebody who is experienced with firearms as you are, you're still gonna find them. Even you manipulate them, you may find 
after practical application at a firearm, you don't like it. And I mean, that just happens. You might be, you know, $200 in cost on, you know, the resale or whatever, but Hey, that's better than having a five, $600 firearm sitting in your safe somewhere. So yeah, I took almost $200, but yeah. it balanced out. So I got about like nine, 10 boxes of ammo. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> and then, you know, six months, if you find a gun that you like, you can't even be thinking about double two hundred dollars. Even someone like me is gonna not worry about it anymore. Yeah, because I'm going shopping. Um, I think I know what I want for Father's Day. Mm. That, Boy, you ain't getting shit day. for Father's Day, birthday, <laughs> Christmas, anniversary. <laughs> you you ask for nothing, mm. sir. <laughs> I can't say shit. You can't say shit, bro. You better get a damn macaroni card and shut the fuck up. <laughs> God damn. My wife love me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she love your ass. Shit. Oh, man. But yeah, okay. let us know what you think. And if you don't mind, let us know what you're carrying or what you got. I mean, yeah. you ain't got to go in detail on your arsenal, but yeah, tell us what one of your favorites is. Tell them something that you got your eye on. You know, oh, I'd yeah. like to see some of that. That'd be kind of mm-hmm. fun. I might yeah. put something else on the spreadsheet for me, so shit. Yeah, because I'm looking for a new uh, EDC, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, do that. All right, man. So on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, this is a constant conversation, man. It's been decades of conversation. Yeah. And I'm not gonna go into the whole big introductory speech, or whatever the fuck. So what you think about um being book smart versus being street smart? Um, I think you have people that are that can be one or the other. I think it's necessary to be both to some degree. You might be more one than the other, but I think you got to have a little bit of both. I mean, because book smart gets you in situations. Street smart keeps you safe in situations, if you will, is the way I kind of see it. I mean, I think that that's kind of one of the reasons why I think both are necessary. And I think it's one of those things where people that rely too much on their book smarts realize that they can when they get out of their element or some shit that they ain't seen before or read about before or heard about you know what i mean they can't adapt and they get fucked up so and i don't even mean that in like you know being in a neighborhood that you ain't supposed to be in after hours street smart i'm just talking about general you know situations you at the work you at work and you know you ain't got that street smarts to know that somebody's on that bullshit and you might trust them and they fuck you over um so i mean that, that's kind of what i'm saying so like what i'm saying is book smart gets you in street smart because like I, i'll tell a story real quick of uh i was uh leading a project a few years back and um they picked me to be the lead for the project i didn't want to be the lead for the project and there was a guy he thought he was going to be the lead for the project got pissed off and so he was trying he was calling like everybody individually and shit trying to um get them on his side to basically kind of try to stage a revolt and get me out. Like, <laughs> bro, tried, I want this shit. tried to <laughs> stage a coup. I was like, man, I don't really give a it. fuck. <laughs> right. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I just want to sit back and chill. So you want it, but they were like, no, we do not want him to leave. We want you to do it. So he was pissed off. Like you could even tell, like even when we had like team meetings and shit, he before he was all like into it. This is great. This is all this, and then then he just shut down. Like once he wasn't the lead no more, he wouldn't provide input. He would still call in, but he tried to be disruptive. He tried to call in the shit. Um, so I was like, fuck it. Got him on the call. Got everybody on the call. I was like, yo, you know, because I saw the shit coming. And I was like, yo, I don't really want this shit. This was given to me i'm sorry if you feel some kind of way it ain't shit that i can do about that for you sir um we are going to execute to the task that we have whether you want to be here or not we can talk about this shit and we can get everybody's feedback and attention and and opinion on this shit and if everybody decides that you would be the better fit and they want you over me that's fine i won't lose any sleep i still get paid so i'm good so what ended up happening was the people that he thought were on his side, they turned on his ass so quick. And because I saw that shit, 
that's why I knew that I could do that shit. And that's where that street smart shit was in, like yeah. paying attention was to what's going on. Last dude, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fuck with him. <laughs> right. Yeah. Man, yeah. that's basically what happened. Like, you know, they was like, yeah, you know, I've seen how Lamar handles itself in different situations. Um, he, he's even killed. He doesn't fly off at anything. You know, he's going to listen to everybody. He's going to respect everybody's opinion. He ain't got to be the smartest guy in the room. None of that shit. So I think Lamar is a good choice. Dude was furious. He ended up quitting. The, he didn't quit the agency, but he quit the, he quit the uh, project. It was funny, too, because he was so pissed off. He was just like, yeah, I'm leaving. And so the, the guys who were running the program called me in the office. They were like, yeah. He came in here and was trying to uh, throw you under the bus. So we knew that he was leaving once he realized it wasn't going to fly. So, but again, I saw all that shit coming. And, you know, because that street smart shit, you know, I, I could anticipate what that motherfucker was going to do. And I was able to set myself up and make sure my T's were crossed and my eyes were dotted. So my shit was legit when he came in a room or when somebody else came in the room. And I mean, that, that's how you do that shit. I mean, that's what helps you. And using that knowledge from the book smarts helps you make that shit a little more efficient. And I mean, that's kind of how I do shit. So um, that's all I got for now. I want to hear what you think, because I think I know where you fall on the spectrum. So I kind of want to hear what you think, and I'll play off that. So you think you know I fall. Like, don't nobody think shit. Don't nobody ever know what the hell I'm no. But um, I agree with you completely. If anybody know, I do, motherfucker. You you definitely got to be both. You definitely got to be both. But for me personally, I like to I like motherfuckers to think I don't, I don't know shit and street shit. Mm-hmm. So when I hit you with that book smart shit, you're like, oh motherfucker, I do that shit at work every time. It's fucking mm-hmm. you. Like yeah, I ain't gonna do that. Well, you got to no, because AR six hundred dash 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 paragraph C line A states, and they be like, "Oh shit, we let got a motherfucker that knows the regs." <laughs> yeah, let me back the fuck up just a little bit. You definitely gotta have both, like you said, mm-hmm. man. You you can't function in in this society we're in unless you have both, mm-hmm. because you can have all street smarts, but they don't know shit as far as you know what I'm saying book wise. And mm-hmm. then, like you said, you can be book smart as fuck but you're lacking that fucking common sense. And that's what I equate street smarts to, in a sense, is fucking common sense. You got to be, you know, like you were, you were aware of your surroundings. You've seen the yeah. bullshit that was on this fucking way, and you knew how to attack the shit tactfully to back it up. Like you said, dotting your eyes, crossing your T's and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So you, you got to be both. If you're not both, then you're, sore, you're sorely fucking lacking. And that's mm-hmm. the same thing I'm teaching, you know, my children. Yes, yes, know the streets. And... Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people equate street smarts to how to sack up a fucking pound of fucking weed or some shit. Yeah, that's or real. knowing how to finesse a motherfucker. And yeah, that may be a, a, a little part of it because, mm-hmm. you know, certain businesses and stuff, you got to have that mouthpiece. You know what I'm saying? You got to know how to finesse just a little bit. But you got to have that book smarts to back up, you know, your finessing and shit. Because I can tell you how to fucking sack up a pound. I can also... I know pi equals fucking three point fourteen or some shit like that. <laughs> but you know, I mean, you got you got to have both, man. That, that's why right. reading is so fucking important. But mm-hmm. I ain't got no real big stories like you got about none of it. But motherfuckers <laughs> think I'm stupid all the fucking time, <laughs> and it's by design. It's mm-hmm. by fucking design. Just like the inspection coming up, these motherfuckers ain't ready. I'm ready. I had my shit ready two weeks ago because mm-hmm. I already knew what the fuck I was, what the fuck I'm looking at. Yeah, and I already knew what the fuck to expect, and I already knew what they was trying to do. So mm-hmm. that's how you, you know, what I'm saying, compile the book smart with the street smart. And me personally, I don't think there should be a versus. Especially, I hate to get sure. on the the man the pedestal again, but shit, that's what the fuck I am. So mm-hmm. especially our people, you know, what I'm saying a lot of a lot of our people have a, a difficult time equating the two. Mm-hmm. They, they 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 can't balance it out. Quite a few of us can. Or I would but, say. Not necessarily equating the two. I say glorifying one over the other, if you yeah. will. Yeah, I like that. I like that better. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying. Most motherfuckers want to be street, or other motherfuckers just want to be. You know, I I have three master's degrees, a PhD, and all this other bullshit. And they other the stupidest like, motherfuckers out there. Yeah, and then other motherfuckers. I've been trapping since blah 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 blah. Man, I know how to talk a motherfucker. I hit socks when he ain't wearing none type shit. <laughs> And right. they're on the same level as the motherfuckers right. with three PhDs and all that other fucking mm-hmm. shit. 
you're, you're sorely lacking if you don't have both. For all the fathers out there, teach your kids both. Yes, sir. Make, make sure they're hitting them books, but make sure they got the common sense to survive in the fucking world, too, because mm -hmm. the, the education system will teach you just enough to pass the test, but it's not going to teach you enough to pass life. So you got to have both. And make sure they understand the value of both. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. It's not just what a uh, little baby didn't be talking about mm -hmm. on their fucking music and shit, man. You got to be able to fucking move wherever oh, no. you are. Damn, now, I was going to give a couple examples of people real quick, but you said little Baby, and I thought about it real quick, and I didn't even think about adding him in, but little Baby, whatever he's talking about in his songs aside, look, look at what he's doing. Definitely look at what he's doing, because that's some good shit. I, 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 I like that young brother for what he's doing. Oh, yeah. um, another one, if you're looking at stocks and investing game, check out uh, Wall Street Trapper. I mean, that, that brother is like street smart, hardcore but then realized from the street smarts that he needs to get book smart to get money legally bro i know his shit and when you mix the two you're 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 relatively right. unfucking stop right man. like right can't nobody tell you shit like for right. real like you, you right. you're good on both sides of the fucking map motherfucker mm -hmm. i could shit i could be in a fucking trap and i, I could also sit and fucking sit with the rest of the hall of it people I can sit right all but right right so, right so it, I, I appreciate yeah. that and then one more uh, there's a guy I've been following like some of the union movements and shit going on throughout the country. So there's a brother, he's making his rounds and I've always wanted to shout him out. Uh, Christian Smalls is his name. He's I've been helping. The name the You've head. probably seen it because he's been doing the rounds on the news. What I so love is that brother ain't trying to code switch. And if you code switch, ain't nothing wrong with that. We talked about that. That brother's just who he is and he knows his shit. He does his research and, and, and he he's doing some good shit against it, it's a real david and goliath story if you follow it check check him out man support that brother too oh, yeah. uh, they doing stone, good shit bro. out there stone. shout oh, out yeah. to him yeah definitely let's get him on the show <laughs> i think he's a little busy right now but um one day one day <laughs> hell yeah man. so but... what, do you, what do you guys think do you think that yeah. you need to have one or the other or do you think you need both? And if you need both, which one do you think you need more of? Because I personally feel like I lean more book mixed with street, and I like that balance. And I'm not, I'm the complete opposite. I lean more street than book because mm -hmm. a lot of my experiences have given me the knowledge I need versus the books. But yeah. As I've transitioned over more, mm -hmm. it's, it's even. See, the cool thing about books and shit is you can learn from the mistakes of other people without having to spend the time, effort, energy, and money of making those mistakes yourself. That's true. And that, that's one of the key things I've learned over the years. Mm -hmm. like, okay, so they did this, did this. I'm not going to do that shit. Mm -hmm. They did this. I ain't doing that shit either. Mm -hmm. Versus, fuck it. Let's oh. see what happens. <laughs> so I'm learning right. that just a little bit. Right, I still right, got the right. fucking in the middle. I can't help it. Ain't nothing wrong with a little fucking right. system. All right, everybody. Last topic is kind of a impromptu topic based on some recent developments. Um, we had some very interesting comments. So I was initially going to you know, take screenshots and blast this particular comment and all that shit. But as it went on during the day, I didn't feel like it. One. And two... As it went back and forth, one of the comments this individual deleted was actually a, a, a it, was, it was what I wish they would have led with. If they would have led with that comment, that would have been good debate. That would have been something we could talk about. But they come in on that troll shit and we can fuck about no troll shit. <laughs> My feelings ain't going to be hurt. Your feelings ain't going to be hurt. So <laughs> I got to thinking about it. And I was listening to some videos. I was listening to a um, comic book and anime uh, Instagrammer that uh, she's a sister and she was talking about like a lot of times in the comments like men be coming for her like you got to read the comics to really know yada 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 and she's like well motherfucker if you listen to me talk I read the comics I know what the fuck I'm talking about and and so you see all that and then I was listening to uh, Lee Mack he's a cigar reviewer that I, I listen to I always check his reviews shout out he to on, him he be on Black Line right? yeah he do oh, yeah he oh, do yeah he, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. Shout, so, shout, out to shout, shout out to him. Yeah, it's funny because when uh, and I'm gonna tell him next time next time I'm in his comments or next time he's on a Zoom. But when I'm watching his videos and Lamar sitting with me, he'll be like, "Pop, pop, 
No way. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny. But yeah, he did a review talking about like he did a video talking about like a uh, um black the black people in the cigar industry. And and it was it was a pretty interesting video and I was looking at some of the comments so we came back and did a, a follow-up video to that. He was like, "Yeah, I just want to really say <laughs> what did he say? He was like he was flaming like he was going to apologize, but he basically him were like, "I really don't give a fuck what you got to say." And I was like, that's why I rock with you uh, that right there. And I mean, he had good points. And it was one of those things where he's like, you know, discussion. So what I wanted to pose to you based on what happened is why the fuck are people so angry on the internet all the fucking time? Like they be in the comments. You ain't even done nothing to nobody. You can disagree with them and they want to go and try to fucking attack. Like why? So, so what do you think about one? What do you think about the anger that these people have? And I know how we deal with it. And, you know, there are those that get rattled by it. So what do you think about that whole concept of like attacking people in the comments, being angry, being negative, trying to troll and all that shit on the internet? Thank you. I would like to say that they pussies. That, that's just the bottom line. They pussies in person. So they tough as fuck on the fucking internet. That that's really they angry as fuck. Keyboard and outraged games. on the fucking internet. But mm-hmm. I guarantee, like that motherfucker in the comments, I guarantee that motherfucker wouldn't say that shit if we was in fucking person. He would have said mm-hmm. a bitch ass thing. Fuck him. No, I don't. I don't understand, man. I don't. I don't get why they're so. That I mean, but that's what social media and just the internet as a whole has been geared to. Is mm-hmm. you know they 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 feed on the outrages of people. Mm-hmm. Sure. That that's that that what makes it big that's what makes stuff go viral shit like that which you know mm-hmm. like somebody said in physical therapy today shit like that is basically dumbing us down and i agree but other than that i, I honestly just feel simply like that they pussies they, mm-hmm. they won't say that shit in your fucking face so that they'll hop on that fucking keyboard just <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. all fucking day but See, we ain't built like that. The same shit I'm saying right now, I'll tell it to you. I don't give a fuck. All day, I, every day. We we could discuss it. We could cuss. We could battle rap. We could fucking fight. I really don't give a fuck. I don't. That, that's mm. that's who I've always been. But Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't get it. Now, if you're trolling just to troll and stuff like that, I mean, honestly, trolling is fun. It's fun. I did it on TikTok with a with a little you're Christian post. guys. And it, it actually wasn't a troll. I legitimately had a question which opened a debate and my question led to somebody just talking it's like a mm-hmm. christian who knows the scripture but can't interpret the scripture when you ask right. them about the shit you know well because yeah like, we talked about it yeah because like if i ask you a question about something in the bible you're you're not going to just oh and the lord saith blah 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 you can actually interpret what the fuck you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying you can make me understand it but some of these people, they just bored. They, they see something, boom, mm-hmm. boom, 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 boom. Other people, especially when you talk about something to uplift our fucking people, they don't mm-hmm. like it. They mm-hmm. don't like it at all. You, they come up with all these excuses, especially the guy on our comments. Y'all check out the comments. Also watch episode 16 and subscribe. But, um, <laughs> and they, you know, they'll, they'll jump in our comments and legitimately not like what we say or got to add their little two cents, like, you know, we're actually wrong. Like, we haven't done the research. Like you were saying, the the young lady with the the, the cigars, right? Mm, go ahead. No, the anime. The no, anime. It, was the, it was comics yeah. and shit. And comics and shit. Yeah. Yes. Like, you know, we, we don't just come up here and just fucking spot our mouth out, spot our mouth off all the time. Sometimes mm-hmm. we shoot the shit. Sometimes we mm-hmm. know what the fuck we be talking about. If you're going to be angry, motherfucker, be angry. I'm sorry mm-hmm. your life sucks. You're stuck in your mm-hmm. fucking mom's basement. And you can't get no fucking pussy because mama won't go to sleep because she's staying up watching fucking reruns of Family mm-hmm. Feud with fucking Steve Harvey and shit. Fuck you, cuz. But um, <laughs> sorry, not sorry at all. But mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't get angry at none of this uh this internet shit. I don't. Mm-hmm. I, it's, it's not built to me. It's internet shit. Yep. And if you want to come to my motherfucking porch and have a fucking conversation, like I said, you can go whatever way you wanted to go. I really don't care. But. Mm-hmm. That that's just what it is now. It's motherfuckers. It's, they they internet gangsters, man. They they Facebook yeah. thugs. They fucking Instagram mafia and all this other fuck <laughs> shit. Like mm-hmm. they they really ain't built like that in person, but they built mm-hmm. like that on on computers. You know, like when 
the George Floyd thing happened. I had like a two, three hour debate. I was drunk as shit by the time I was finished. But, you know, I had a debate with a dude going back and forth about the whole fucking George Floyd thing. And I know dude, dude wouldn't run up, come up, come at me like that in person. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't. And if he sees this, yeah, bro, you wouldn't come at me like that. You know, they, they just feel like they want to voice their opinion some kind of way. Just, I don't know if they want to be relevant or mm-hmm. they just, you know, they want to get into the fucking fight because they hate what they're doing at home. So this is a way to fucking deviate from their real fucking life. Mm-hmm. And that that's really what I think, man. They, they, they anger on Facebook because they hate their fucking real life. And they pussies mm-hmm. in person. Mm-hmm. How about you? <laughs> so... <laughs> What I'm going to say is just because you have an opinion, however strong it may be, it could be wrong. And I say that about us too. Yep. Um, okay. There's been, there's been topics that we talked about that if I, if we go back to that topic now, my position on that would have changed some. And I'll give you a good example. Um, we talked about uh, changing the race on superheroes. Mm-hmm. My initial stance on that was um as long as it doesn't change who the character is, I don't really give a shit. Mm-hmm. That's still true. However, after reading like Tuskegee Airs and Black Sands and some of the other ones that are out there, you know, I, I also see the point and the validity of saying, why do we have to just use these same characters? Let's make some new characters. You know, let's use different mythology. So that broadened my perspective and it, it changed. Like if we went back and had the topic now, I would change a little bit on it. And I, I don't have an ego to where I can't be wrong. If you come at it from a place of, hey, let's chat about it. I mean, hell, there's been comments we've had where it's like, hmm, that's an interesting thought. Mm-hmm. Um, let, let me let me think about that for a little bit. Or And I've learned stuff. And, and that's fine. And that's cool. And that's half of what we even here for. So yeah. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with And like we even said, healthy debate is cool. Mm-hmm. But if you're just gonna say I'm wrong, that's it. Without, without no meat and potatoes behind it, that don't <laughs> right. mean shit. That don't mean shit to me. <laughs> mean Especially thing. after this week. Well, I tell mm-hmm. you what. But like you said, I mean, you got these keyboard gang keyboard gangsters out here, and, and they they bad on the internet. I hate that shit. I mean, another example is um okay. Remember the Cowboy Bebop live action that they did on Netflix? Mm-hmm. Um, they had cast a, a girl to play Ayn. Yeah, I remember when you were talking and about And they were like blasting her. And I'm like, yo, this is a girl. Like they've done this shit a lot too, where you get like people blasting the girl or the, a child actor, you know? Or like even remember in Star Wars, I can't remember um Asian Asian uh, woman. I can't think of her name right now. Oh, I know you're talking about. I can't think she she was on the part when they went to the casino and shit. They would bla- she got off social media altogether. And like um, uh, Mark Hamill and shit, they were coming to her defense and all that shit because they were attacking her. They were like calling her ugly and shit. And it's like, that's just not necessary, man. I mean, it's one, if you don't like the direction that a particular property is going in, attack that. I'm fine with that. But just don't don't watch the shit. Or don't watch the shit. I mean, if I don't like it, I'm not going to watch it. But don't be attacking those people personally. I mean, they do shit to you. Yeah. They, they, They ain't pissing your oatmeal. So, why you got to be so damn angry so i mean that's my thing it's one thing to have healthy criticism but just to be angry for the sake of angry and to be arguing that's just unnecessary and like that that's one thing too you'll see like um in, in certain guns like if somebody likes a particular gun like they blast them like you like your Taurus. like i'm sure there's certain people like that oh <laughs> he, he likes a peasant firearm you know <laughs> so <laughs> that shit works for you knock your ass off <laughs> <laughs> this shit works for you you like it that's all that matters i mean mm-hmm. if you are a gun owner and a proponent of the second amendment that should be all you should be happy about yeah we can you know talk shit i might you know fuck with you and say you know my carry is better than your carry but it's all in good fun i mean i ain't gonna be like yo you got a shit gun bro <laughs> throw that shit away that's what you like that's what works for you that's what you know was in your budget at the time that, that's all good i mean you don't know the circumstances around it and you don't know where people are coming from with their opinions and what they think. So try to understand instead of trying to just get angry and argue. And again, to the individual that commented before, <laughs> appreciate you watching the video. You can subscribe too. 
Thank you. Come on, buddy. Uh, that, respect. I mean, I had to watch it. They had to comment. So yeah, that's nice. cool. Definitely appreciate the watch. I mean, uh, there's a financial brother that I follow. Um, he talks stocks. And he's he's not a big channel, but um, they be coming for him too. He's a I think he's out of Houston. And like sometimes you can tell when that shit like when they be hating on him. Like if he he makes a call on the stock, and um, it was wrong, they'd be like, "Yo, you don't know shit. You wrong." And I'm like, bruh, nobody's going to get this shit right 100% of the time. That shit sucks. Hell no. <laughs> I mean, shit, I was right today, but wrong at the same time. Yeah. So <laughs> shit happens. And, and they be attacking this brother. And that shit's not right, man. He's out. He's putting himself out here trying to explain shit to y'all. Do your own research. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, be willing to, you know, take his information and then build on what you got. See if it supports or give you something else to think about. And that's all this shit is. Like, let's have a different opinion. Everybody's got opinions. Everybody's wrong to some degree. So go at it from that point and stop being so fucking angry. Go, go like drink some tea and meditate or burn some sage or smoke some masturbate. weed. Masturbate. Something. Just masturbate. Wh- whatever. Whatever Just you want to do. Go, rub one out. Just go ahead and get a ha Just go ahead and get a ha yeah. ha You be calmer <laughs> by the end. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I mean, like I said before, and I don't want to make this about the individual that commented on the last episode. No, he's not that important. But but it's so interesting because, like I said, where he started and where he, and I'm assuming it's a guy, but where they started and where he ended up are two totally different places. Mm-hmm. And like, mm-hmm. bruh, again, assuming, if that's how you feel, that's awesome. Let's talk about it. You did have an in. Sorry, the right. comment that he deleted had a very interesting comment in it that I would have liked to talk about more, but they deleted it and ran off. So it is what it is. So don't, don't delete it and run off when you're getting called out on your shit. I mean, if you want to call somebody else out, expect for that shit to come back. Mm-hmm. I like we said, we here for it. Shit, all yeah, day. I, I love that shit. Trolls, confrontation, don't get no oh. fucks. I mean, shit. I, I ain't gonna lose no sleep. I slept great last night. So basically. Yeah, I called you laughing when I saw it. It was entertaining. <laughs> I was like, let's go. But, but yeah, the, the ones that are actually add to the, mm-hmm. the content, those, those are the ones I can appreciate. Mm-hmm. Like, um, there's been a couple of episodes of Men on the Warriors where, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, some people have put me on game or some mm-hmm. shit. They had some real uh, educated discussions and mm-hmm. shit. Prime, prime example. I, I didn't know that every single person on the planet had melanin in them until somebody commented. Yeah. I did my research when I came back. It was like, yeah, you right. I appreciate it. Yeah. And, I mean, and that, and that's those, what it's all about. Yeah, those are the ones I appreciate. But the motherfuckers that just... Rah, 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 rah. I haven't got one on Melanin Warriors yet, but I'm waiting on it. You but, will. Um, Given that topic, you will. It, it's one of those things where, what are you doing? Yeah. You, you can comment all day, but where's your shit? Where's your file like your file? But again, and I mean, and I disagree with you on that a little bit. I mean, you don't necessarily have to have a podcast. I mean, you know, we out here putting shit out. Discussion. Debate. You know, if I say some wrong shit, or I say some shit that changes my opinion, or you say some shit. I mean, hell, we've had times where it's like, yeah, I disagree with you on that. And you'd be like, no, I still think what I think. Or you'd be like, yeah, that's a good point. And that's what it's all about, man. That's what it should be. But yeah. So stop being so like- fucking angry, man. Throw them participation trophies away and, and, and grow the fuck up. Yeah. I'm sorry you hate your spouse. Hmm. Tell your spouse. Hmm. <laughs> I love I love my spouse. My hey, wife man, is amazing. Man, tell about it. My spouse is fucking the shit times 20. But um, yeah, man, they they just I don't know. Just stop being fucking angry on the internet. Like, prime example, Facebook. My daughters, they mm-hmm. post shit on Facebook all day, all day, and it's mm-hmm. jokes. It's mm-hmm. jokes. People be like, "Oh, what's going on with her? What she got going on? What is she talking about with this?" And blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah. They're using it for what it's for. It's supposed to be fun. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The the social media shit is supposed to be fun. Connecting with people advertising all this other shit but so many people are in their fucking feelings it, it turns into something else like goddamn Rod Wave 
Get out your goddamn <laughs> feelings, space ass. Right. <laughs> we, we ain't gonna make him famous because I don't even remember the fuck his fucking uh, name was on mm-hmm. YouTube. But to my guy, hopefully you watching this one right here, man. Come on back, man. Come on back. But come with some valid shit. I mean, like like I said before, the comment that was deleted was actually interesting. That was the only one. Yeah. So that actually has some stuff that I would have liked to dig into a little more. Yeah, because I challenged them on it. I was ready for it. Wanted to come delete, back. Deleted the comment. So what I will say is, one, we don't give a fuck about the trolls. We don't give a fuck about the angry and all caps. Shout out to whoever that was because you gave us a topic to talk about. So Thanks, man. We, we definitely appreciate that so MVP MVP <laughs> so again we don't take this shit personal at all ain't gonna lose no sleep my checks don't ch- my checks don't change nope at all shit you can't take personally yep. anyway. like they you don't know you. like Dave, Dave Chappelle say this shit ain't real it ain't yep. I mean, motherfuckers yeah. always putting their best foot forward and all that shit. If you want to come with that bullshit, man, come with it. Come mm-hmm. with it. But if you want to have an educational debate, like I've said, like I just said about uh, the Men of the Warriors mm-hmm. podcast, we, we don't know everything. We're, we're giving it from our perspective and the, the, the knowledge that we know and the research we've done. But there's always somebody who knows more on sure. a particular subject. That's real. Yeah, come at Come at that shit. No, like, no, you're wrong. That's the problem. No, get give me some some facts and be like, that's cool, bro. But A B C D E F G, kind of like when we do, especially when we talk offline. Yeah. Cause you, I'll say some shit and be like, no, nah, man, you got to think of it like this and this and this and this. I'm like, oh shit, I didn't even mm-hmm. think about that. You know what I'm saying? But if y'all just want to be angry, be angry. I'm gonna say, man, there's a lot yeah, of fucked up shit in the world right now. Inflation is a bitch. There's mm. wars and shit. Fucking the eggs is four dollars out here, cuz I, I fucking did my taxes and they were a bitch. <laughs> oh I, ooh, that's a bitch. Um I've been I've been waiting for two months for our shit. Mm-mm. We'll talk about that shit later, but that was that's a another good. topic. So it is it's shit in the world that it's way way more serious than getting mad and wasting energy on typing some shit. I love the comments. So keep them coming. Please do. Yeah, and for the people that get angry on Facebook, primarily Facebook, and put your entire family business or mm. whatever out there, man, that shit needs to stop, man. That shit's not for you. That, Bruh. that shit's not for everybody. If you have a problem with that certain person, address that shit Personal, a DM or a phone call or a text message or something like cut this shit out, man. That's just ridiculous. Bro, somebody I know aired their husband out mm. on Facebook. No, all caps. I was like, hey, come on. No, you do, you're doing that shit for the attention, man. Like if you need to fucking vent, you know what I'm saying? Fit just you know on a personal. Get therapy, notes. shit. Yeah, sorry, sorry, babe. If you you get upset about this. One. You're gonna see it when it comes out. Mm-hmm. But you know, for a second, if my if, if my wife was feeling was feeling a certain way, you know, she go to social media and put how she feeling in that fucking thing. But you know, we we sat there and had a conversation and it was like, you know, this this shit is not for fucking everybody. If, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You want to address some shit? Let's address some shit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't need to know, but everybody don't need to know. But if you you know what I'm saying, freedom of speech and all that, if you feel like doing yeah. it, love you, love you, babe. Just on a marriage level, just real quick, completely off topic. That's just a part of growing. I think yeah. that'll be a good topic for us later, growing in marriages and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it is social media was built to to be fun and to connect with people and it in turn into this monster that motherfuckers can't they, they can't control it no more. It's just ridiculous. Oh, man. They can't they Twitter can't is the, things like Facebook jail. Twitter is the ghetto, man. Yeah, that, that like, shit. Something like motherfuckers be so angry about every like like all I follow is like mo- I follow like 90% stock people mm-hmm. like how the fuck are you arguing with somebody about a stock bro like you don't, why? You don't follow me on Twitter I don't follow hardly anybody on Twitter bro no, nobody follows me on Twitter <laughs> oh, I'm sorry <laughs> throw, throw your Twitter hand, handle out there I'll put it at the bottom bro I don't even know it <laughs> I'll text you later 
But yeah, man, last thing I got to say is, man, if you're mad about something that somebody posts or anything like that, uh, address it in a way that you can have an open fucking dialogue. Don't just, mm-hmm. you're wrong and I said that, that, That's not, that's, who, who's the, who are you to fucking say that that person is wrong about something like, you know, to mm-hmm. have some facts behind it. That's where the book smart and street smart shit come in. And, you know? Or just don't put that in your, your, your energy. Like, I mean, I've had people that say, like stupid shit on Facebook and I'm like, I right, you gotta go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't see it anymore. And it's I'm peaceful. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But you know, some people live for that shit. They go mm-hmm. on there just to look for the fucking show, man. And if you're putting your personal shit out there, stop giving these people a fucking show. Hell, stop giving me a show. Cause, <laughs> cause yes. I enjoy the show stop too. having him arguing <laughs> on TikTok, people. No, that shit's still coming because they be posting some bullshit up there that, that has to be addressed sometimes. That it just don't make it. But for the guy on YouTube, hey man, comment on this one too. But just make sure you subscribe, man. Because <laughs> if you you if you thought last episode was controversial, you gotta keep digging. We got 61 of these motherfuckers, man. You keep digging, you're gonna find some shit. So go ahead and subscribe. Oh, yeah, like funny shit. Remember we talked about um we talked about like firearm shit. Mm-hmm. We talked. I think we talked about the ammo shortage, and then a little bit later, we talked about back to blue being BS. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it was amazing how many uh, subscribers we lost after that. Yeah, shit. we did. I was like, God damn! Ooh, wait. <laughs> hey, don't take it personal. Talk to us. Talk yep. to us. And if it's good enough, we'll we'll debate about it. And maybe put you on the show. Mm-hmm. Send me the link. Problem with that. I don't have a problem with that at all. I'm sure, sure you ain't got a problem with it, bro. Not at all. But you know, if you really want to have a debate and we feel like it's okay enough to put it on the fucking show, come on with it. I like to hear. Let me throw some ground rules, too. We will not be on this motherfucker arguing, yelling and shit. I ain't got that kind of free time. No, so I'm just going to say, bitch, and we're going to cut your ass up. <laughs> Simple as that. Just like we were younger. Lamar going to say, get him, Kevin. And it's, bitch, <laughs> it's going to be it. That's it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. If you're yes, angry sir. and you post Clap some angry hands. shit on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, wherever you find your social media life, stop. Free evaluate your shit. And yeah, that's all I got. Put it, in the com- put it in the comments. I want to hear what grinds your gears. You might give us a fucking topic that we might want to add you to. So yeah, right. let, let's hear what makes you angry on the internet. i like to hear that too. Oh, that'd be fun. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for the mm-hmm. Sakaar Check-In. So, man, you know, we done went through it just about the whole episode, man. So how's your accessories treating you? Um... Tight. Um, nothing too fancy, too high end, too memorable. Um, just so I don't want to say serviceable, but that's what I'll go with. Um, the the Penelope. Um, it, it's it's okay. Um, I try something else from them just to see if it's any different. I will throw a little bit of it in the Infinity Bottle, see what happens. Uh, my affinity bottle started with a whiskey I couldn't stand, so and my affinity bottle is pretty good right now, so that's the thing. Uh, the cigar, it finally loosened up, and it's okay. It's still, like I said, not as flavorful as it was, and probably the first going into the second, third, but um, it's all right. It's burning okay. I've had to touch it up a few times, but that's mostly because it's sitting. I mean, it's not like uh, some of the high ends where you just let it sit for hour for for minutes and minutes and minutes. And it comes back up like you never left it. So it's okay. What about yours? Hey, man, everything was fucking good, man. Like, I ain't gonna say it was fucking amazing. Like, it's a placentia or uh, Mm -hmm. anything like that. But the cigar was really good, man. Like, it it, it wasn't too strong, wasn't too weak, had some good smoke, wasn't too earthy. Because I really Mm -hmm. don't like those really earthy fucking cigars. Mm -hmm. I can taste dirt. I can taste dirt. Don't ask why I can taste dirt. No. I'm an army, goddammit. I could taste dirt, <laughs> but it wasn't a bad cigar, man. And my mm. blend, my blend was fucking great. Like mm. I said earlier, I'm gonna go back to it. I'm probably gonna finish this shit off. 
I don't know where I'm gonna end up sleeping at, but I'm gonna finish. Just gonna be over there crying and shit. But I will say before we fucking move on, I'm trying to do this thing where I try some new shit on the on on the podcast, man. Because if everybody's been watching since episode one, it's always been Crown or Ten Cup or Penny or something Mm -hmm. like that. I'm trying to try something new at least every week. So you. you know, put something in the comments, guys. Give me something new to try, man. I promise. If it's if it's an alcoholic beverage, I'll fucking try. It. I don't. Give yeah, it will. I'll drink it. Yeah, it will. <laughs> Stop bringing up old shit. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I'll try it, man. I'll put some in the comments, man. But my accessories mm-hmm. is pretty good. Man. Yep. Uh, one thing to add on real quick before we go is kind of a what's best. I found um, a car by Blackbird. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, that was a pretty good cigar. I got two of them, so I smoked the other one some other time. Oh, you found it in the store? Or you yeah. Had it, uh, yeah, my oh, spot. No my spot had had a bunch of them. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, I'll get you one to put it in the humidor. Yeah, shout out to them. Shout out to them. Yeah, so um, it was pretty cool. Um, check Instagram. Probably by the time this is live, I, I'll show you what uh, was cool about the cigar. I won't put it here, so you got to check out the Instagram. Style language podcast on Instagram. Check us out. And with that, that's all I got. All right, man. So um, you say you got a quote for us, man. Before we go ahead and close this thing, out, got bro. You become one of them bangers, man. Let's see if we can keep that shit up. Oh, what you get? This was a, it's a simple quote. Um, I, I listened to Bo the fifth column on YouTube, and mm-hmm. he said a quote, and it's like, and he said, it's cheaper to be a good person. Simple. And, and just, just think about that a little bit, like. The shit that you do, it's expensive to be an asshole. And that goes into our last topic. It's just cheaper to be a good person. So please do. Before we close out, I'm going to challenge you on that one. I think it's cheaper to be an asshole. You think it's cheaper to be an asshole? Mm -hmm. I would say short term, but long term, it's not. Long term, yeah. Um, Short term, definitely. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I look at shit long term anyway, so. Long term, yeah. so we'll we'll edit it a little bit. Long term <laughs> is cheaper to be a good person. How about that? That, that? That's an interesting quote. All right, everybody. That's episode 61. Had some fun tonight. We're we're done. So you got anything else for the people before we wrap up? Yeah, yeah, man. Something I wanted to add, man. I checked out uh Marlon Wayne's headliners. Um it just dropped yesterday, and it's kind of it gives me the, that comic view feel, man. I, mm-hmm. I always appreciate when them guys that's on that level that's bringing other motherfuckers mm-hmm. in behind them, man. And the shit, the motherfuckers actually pretty fucking funny, man. So y'all, if y'all got HBO, HBO Max, y'all check out Headliners, man. That shit was actually pretty fucking funny. I mm-hmm. hope they make it a fucking series because that could be the next uh, Death Comedy Jam or some shit. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. I look for it. So yeah, with that, man, episode 61 in the books. Like yes, I always sir. say, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we out. Yeah. Perfect.